A lot of people say that going for a walk after eating a meal really helps them improve and speed up their digestion. But what does the science say? Today I'm going over scientific studies on how exercising after a meal, both high intensity exercise and low intensity exercise, influences how quickly you digest your meal. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And this video was inspired by a few of you asking this question, and another related question I've been getting lately is how exercise influences your appetite, so in terms of how much do you end up eating afterwards. And if you are interested in that, I do actually have a video on that, so check that out after this one if you're interested. And today I will be focusing on digestion rate, not only because it plays a role in determining your appetite, but also because it has some big health implications. And specifically, I will be talking about gastric emptying, which is the rate at which food leaves your stomach. So first, I'll talk about how exercise, both low and high intensity, influences your gastric emptying, and then I'll talk about why you should care, so why you might want faster or slower gastric emptying depending on your situation and goals. And I will mostly be focusing on a meta-analysis of 20 studies that included 35 trials looking at how different types of exercise influence gastric emptying after meals. But first, I'll quickly talk about a specific study to kind of explain how these types of studies are done. So in this one study, they had participants eat a meal that was labeled with radioactive isotopes to trace it going through their body, and had them either stand after eating that meal, like right after, or do light walking at two miles per hour, or do brisk walking at four miles per hour. And they looked at how either standing versus light walking versus brisk walking influenced how quickly that meal moved through their body and specifically how fast it got out of their stomach. And they found that doing light walking right after eating increased gastric emptying rates by 40%. So food left people's stomachs 40% faster when they did two mile per hour walking than when they did standing. And for brisk walking, they found that walking at four miles per hour increased gastric emptying rates by 55%. And so what we can see from this study, which is also confirmed by the meta-analysis, walking after eating really increases the rate at which you digest food. And interestingly, it looks like you get most of the benefits just from light walking, and doubling the speed at which you walk only gives you a little bit of additional benefit in terms of speeding up how quickly food leaves your stomach. And based on this, we might be thinking, well, walking compared to doing nothing really speeds up your digestion, and walking even faster speeds up your digestion even more. So therefore, it seems like doing something even more intense, like running or high-intensity biking, should speed up your digestion even more than that, right? Well, this meta-analysis actually found that doing high-intensity exercise slows digestion, both compared to doing nothing, like standing or being at rest, or compared to walking. And to use another specific study as an illustration, one study looked at high-intensity interval training with sprints and found that when people did sprint intervals, either at 70% of their VO2 max or 100% of their VO2 max, they really slowed down their gastric emptying rate to the point where these people had four times more food left in their stomach after an hour than people who did not do these sprints. And going back to the meta-analysis, what they found overall was that doing exercise up to 40% of your VO2 max really speeds up digestion, whereas doing exercise at 70% or greater of your VO2 max really slows down digestion. And then what happens in between is sort of a gradient from speeding up to slowing down. So if you're closer to 40%, maybe 40 to 50%, you're going to have a very slight increase in digestion rate. Whereas if you get up to 50 to 60% or 60 to 70%, you're going to start getting some slowing of your digestion rate. And now for how to apply these results to your life, what you do with these is really going to depend on what your situation and your goals are. So first, if you are someone who has a normal, healthy rate of digestion, and you are the type who eats based on stomach hunger, so how much food you feel is in your stomach and how much it's growling versus how full of volume it feels, then you might actually want to find ways to slow down your gastric emptying rate potentially, because it's been found that when you have a slower gastric emptying rate, you are going to tend to feel full for longer. So if you are trying to lose weight or trying to eat less and you eat based on stomach hunger, then you might actually not want to do low intensity exercise in the few hours after you eat a meal because you might want to rest and allow that food to digest more slowly instead. And a stranger implication of these results is that if your stomach can take it, if it doesn't mess with your digestion, then you might actually want to do high intensity exercise not too long after eating. 
Now, of course, you will want to leave at least 30 minutes to an hour to let yourself digest enough and get things started so you don't give yourself just bad digestion from exercising right after eating. But these results do suggest that if you are trying to slow down your digestion, then doing something like intense running or sprints or high intensity bicycling a little while after you eat is going to help slow down your digestion rate, which might help keep you fuller. And another reason you might want to slow down your gastric emptying rate is if you've either been told or you have a feeling that your food kind of passes through you too quickly, because if that does happen due to various conditions, that can reduce how many nutrients you're able to absorb from your food. So if you have that happening, then that's also another reason to not be walking or doing other low intensity exercise during the three or so hours after you eat a meal, because you do not want to speed up your digestion even more. And now on the other side of the coin, a lot of people deal with slow digestion. And in fact, there's a condition called gastroparesis for clinically slow digestion that affects quite a few people, especially people who also have diabetes, such that actually about a third of people with diabetes also have gastroparesis. Or even if you don't fall into the category of clinically slow digestion, you still could have some suboptimal digestion speed going on. So for example, if you have GERD, one common cause of GERD is slow digestion because food stays in your stomach longer and then that acid comes up into your throat. And another way that slightly slow digestion can manifest is if you feel full for a long time after meals or you actually feel more full over time after eating, that can be a sign that you are digesting food quite slowly, especially in terms of gastric emptying. So in any of these types of situations, you would want to increase your rate of digestion. So if you want to do that, you could just go for low intensity exercise during the two to three hours after you eat. So things like walking, whether it's light or brisk walking or light biking, anything like that, that gets your heart rate up, but not too high. And this data suggests that if you are trying to speed up your rate of digestion, then you should avoid doing any kind of intense exercise during the three to four hours after you eat a meal. And these time windows for how many hours after eating to do this or that are not super precise because the amount of time it takes for food to leave your stomach depends on a lot of different factors, especially related to the types of food you eat. So things like whether the meal was big or small, having bigger meals, you're going to need more time for digestion, more time for it to leave your stomach. And the same goes for how liquid versus solid your food is. So foods that are more solid are going to take longer to leave your stomach. So for all these windows, I'm giving a rough estimate of three hours after you eat in terms of when the exercise needs to occur. But in general, food is definitely going to be in your stomach, at least to some extent, up to two to three hours after you eat a meal, and it's going to be less so if you just ate a snack. And for one last implication, one thing that these studies talk about is the fact that a lot of high-intensity athletes actually suffer from a lot of GI problems. And one possible reason for these GI problems is doing your high intensity exercise too close to eating meals, because for some people that can cause problems and it might not be immediately evident that that is the cause of the problems. So if you do a lot of high intensity exercise and you have a lot of gastrointestinal issues, then it might be worth tweaking when you eat relative to when you exercise, if you haven't thought of doing that already. If you found this video or any of my other videos helpful or interesting, please consider supporting me and making them via the Patreon, which is for monthly support or the GoFundMe, which is for one-time support. I really appreciate all of you who help keep me going with your support there. So thank you so much for that. And I will drop the links for both of those in the caption below or the description. I don't know. <laughs> if you like this video, please like and share it so that other people can get this information and learn about how they might be able to tweak their exercise timing versus meal timing to optimize their digestion. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.